surrounded himself, no matter where he went in the country, with people that would have confidence in him that he did no wrong. And he did that all over the country in mass. And these were not children. These were not the vulnerable people. These were people ahead of society. These were, these were people that ran institutions. They weren't silly people. These were supposed to be educated people. And he groomed them quite easily, seemingly. I personally think that the charity work he was doing was totally a cover for everything he was doing. Um, to give this image of this wonderful man that was raising all these funds for charity. And I don't think it had anything to do with his, with his religion at all. Because you can't commit a sin on one hand and pray forgiveness on the other, because it doesn't make the sin go away. I feel very angry towards anybody who enabled Jimmy Savile to behave in the way he did, which was monstrous. I feel that the people who were aware of his behavior have to hang their heads in shame. There was no way anyone was going to believe me. Um, obviously, being a child, you, you know, you, you don't have no dealings with the authorities, you don't understand, obviously, how you understand it as an adult, but nobody was going to believe me. Last time we met, you said something about making a promise to the Duchess. Yeah, to honour her memory. And you seemed to suggest that you'd sat with her dead body. I did. A very happy time. And then uh, it, it wasn't quite clear when I played the recording. But Don't worry, I've got a memory like an elephant. But it, it sounded like you'd said you'd never do that shit again. What could you have meant? No idea, because I never said it. The machine wants fattling. Busy at the moment, but uh, well, yeah, come in for a minute. Thought oh, it was next week. Uh, right. Uh, right. Good heavens. What a big stay. Well, he's not here that much. Is this how you leave all the places you stay? Not that we ever know where you do stay, but to turn your mother's home into a what? Quite right, Beryl. The Duchess might be gone, but I know she's still up there looking down and she would expect the same standard of behaviour as when she was alive. I should think so. So why did you want us round? Uh, I get letters every day, you know, um, people asking for help, you know, brain scanners, hostels for the homeless, day centres for the mentally handicapped, and it's all work I want to do, but I need help. What kind of help? Well, you know, uh, admin accounts, all the stuff you're good at and I'm not. You know, if you good people help me organise my life, then I can spend more time playing the Good Samaritan, which I know is what the Duchess would want. Well, if it's for charity, I suppose we can hardly say no. Mm. One second. You new specs, Mr Savile. I'm Susan. You rang and to ask for them to be brought to your house? Yes, yes, I did. Uh, By me, especially. Yeah. Mm. The manager said. Indeed, I did. Uh, so entranced was I. Um, 
by your charms when you were in that room and shone that little torch into my eyes. It's called an ophthalmoscope, Mr. Savile. Ophthalmoscope, right. Got a little shiver down my spine just hearing you say that. <laughs> and call me Jimmy, Susan. Um. Anyway, uh, I'm all out of milk. And could you nip to the corner shops down the road on the right and then come back and get the goggles? Oh, of, of course. Good girl. Uh, I'll, I'll see you in a bit. Uh, autograph hunter. Uh, you don't have to start straight away. Well, that's good, cos we can't. He'd be my little guardian angels. I won't go that far. But if we can help you help others, Sav, then we will. Right. Great, that's it. enough for a tin bath for his boat to bathe in, but it'll do for a brew. Enter Jimmy Savile HQ. Yeah, don't mind the mess, the cleaners have let me down. The kitchen's best, just through there. After your mother's death, far from stopping, the rumours grew. We're back on rumours again. About your behaviour with girls. What are you doing? Stop! Oh, just do what men and women do. What are you reversing? Yeah. Oh. It's what I call SOS. Same old shit. Hey, there's a the door's locked. The door's locked. Let me out! Yeah? I'll tell the police! No! Sit down! Gossip. Balloons full of hot air. Oh, you're going to tell the police about that? Yeah, I'm going to tell the police about that. Yeah, you're going to tell the police about that. Yeah, you're going to tell the police about that. Yeah, you're going to tell the police about that. Yeah, you're going to tell the police about that. Yeah, you're going to tell the police about that. Yeah, you're going to tell the police about that. Yeah, you're going to tell the police about that. Yeah, you're going to tell the police about that. Yeah, you're going to Whatever you may have thought just happened. Didn't happen. Have you heard of Savile's Travels? Of course I have. Right, well, as it happens, I'm doing a recording of one from Leeds today. And I'd like you to do a little interview with me, and then you can go. But the rumours didn't go away, did they? Only in the minds of a few naysayers and killjoys. I was on an upward trajectory. Yeah, becoming an increasingly powerful figure not, in broadcasting, not powerful, which... Not powerful, trusted and respected. Nobody who mattered believed them rumours. Otherwise, why would the BBC have offered me the show I did next? Here I am in the city of my birth, talking to the lovely Susan. Susan, tell me, uh, what do you do for the job? Training optometrist. Really? Brains as well as beauty? I... I wouldn't say that. And uh, tell me, what kind of hobbies outside work do? What do you enjoy doing? Well, I like baking cakes. Oh, one day you'll make a lovely wife for some lucky young man. <laughs> What's so brilliant is you can hear the girl's nervous, but with that avuncular manner, you soon win her trust. No one doubts Jimmy's got away with young people. Which brings us to the purpose of this meeting. Roger and I have been developing a new show. Where Top of the Pops was aimed at teens, kids will be the key to this. Simple premise. Basically, we ask the public to write in, asking us to make a wish come true for either themselves or someone they know. Might be a boy wanting to fly a helicopter or a... Girl wanting to sing a duet with her favourite pop star. Paraplegic wanting to scale Ben Nevis in a wheelchair. Exactly, exactly. You've got it. So our idea would be to have the presenter sat there in a special chair. Wave the magic wand. Got it. So when do I start? Well, well, job's not necessarily yours, Jimmy. Do you mind me asking who else is in the running? Um, Monty Modlin. No. Oh. oh dear, old Monty. Yeah. And he's very interested in the job. And he's already suggested a super title. Monty will fix it. <laughs> Perfect. If it was being presented by Field Marshal Viscount Montgomery of Alamein. Jimmy will fix it does have quite a ring too. Still wrong. What would you suggest? Jim will fix it. 
One syllable shorter, much catchier. Jim will fix it. You're right. Jim sounds like your favourite uncle. You don't have kids, do you? I don't, because where there are kids, there's usually a wife, and where there's a wife, there's strife. <laughs> but you do like children. Love them, love them. I can give them a squeeze and hand them back. <laughs> don't forget, though, in my various voluntary roles, I brought a great deal of sunshine into the lives of children. Indeed, indeed. Give us a minute, will you, Roger? Look, I've no doubt you're the best man for the job, Jimmy. I have no doubt either, King Billy, given that my success is the reason you're sitting in that chair. Why wouldn't you put me in the fix-it chair? There's a matter I need to raise first. I'll save your blushes by doing it for you. The matter of the young lady committed suicide. Of course. There was an investigation. And very impressed I was by the diligence with which my learned friend carried it out, even though I knew I would be exonerated. I do need an absolute assurance from you that you have no skeletons hiding in the closet. I swear on my mother's grave. Come in. Anna. I just wanted to let you know... I've heard. You've given it to Savile. Look, I know you don't like him. He's a I... rude, arrogant man. There are women in this building who make sure they are never alone with him. None of them have told me that. Oh, come on. You must have heard the rumours. About what? His behaviour with teenage girls. I haven't heard any rumours. Well, Douglas Muggeridge has heard them. And if Radio One has heard them, why haven't you? Did Douglas investigate these rumours? Yes. Admittedly, nothing conclusive was found. Well, there you are. But what about the girl who committed suicide? All investigated by the lawyer. And do you consider that to be the end of the matter? He found no evidence to justify the allegations. The investigation looked right across the BBC. And he did say that such is the labyrinthine nature of TV centre and the dressing room area that it was inevitable some immoral behaviour would occur. And that's supposed to be an excuse. That immoral behaviour is ultimately your responsibility, Bill. Which is why I've taken steps to deal with it. Admission to TV centre is now strictly ticket only. There's now much greater vigilance to keep out under 16s. Does that include girls who climb over walls to get into the back of the building? And the girls in the BBC club plied with drinks by pop stars and staff who we employ. Entrance to the BBC club has been tightened up. Anna, I'm doing my best, but I can't work miracles. And anyway, this show's going to be centred on kids, not teens. They'll be working as a team, making sure they're properly looked after. You can't possibly believe this man has any real empathy with children. All I know is Jimmy Savile is a brilliant talent, and we have to look after the talent. And all I know is a man like that has no place working at the BBC. That's my decision, Anna, not yours. Mr. Cotton? Hello. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six, five, four, three. Good evening, one and all, and welcome to the very first edition of Jim Will Fix It, a brand new show where yours truly makes dreams come true. It's a tough job, but someone's got to do it. <laughs> Tonight, we have a young boy who wants to swim with dolphins, and last but not least, three teenage girls who are desperate to meet the Osmonds. <laughs> Suddenly, it all made sense. Everything I'd done before had been preparing me for sitting in that throne and seeing kiddies' faces light up as I made the dreams come true. It wasn't my impression when I attended a recording age nine, seeing all the production crew urging kids to grin when they went up to see me. They didn't need any urging. And when you went on camera, you just seemed sort of distant and cold. It's called professionalism. I just felt like I was seeing another side to you. You've not been listening, have you? There's only one side to me, and he's talking to you now. And he's thinking to himself, 
I hope I didn't misjudge Dr. Wordsmith. I hope he's not like some of his fellow scribes, always wanting to lift the toilet lid to see what's lurking in the pan. Because were that the case, I might tell him to sling his up. No, I just want this book to paint a rounded portrait. Then let's have no more talk of kiddies being urged to grin. I brought joy into innocent lives. That's all. Oh, minibus. Jeez. Hang on, hang on, come back. They're not going to go without you, are they? Can't be a scruff if you're going on the telly to meet Jimmy Savile. Right. Perfect. Go on. Oh, Kevin, Kevin, hang on. The tie. Right, remember, make sure you give this to a grown-up to give to Jimmy. Bye. Bye. Have fun. Now, all that remains is for me to give you lovely boys your Jim will fix it badge, but there's quite a few of you, so I can't give you all one each. Instead, I've had a ginormous one made for all of you. So if you all stand up here now, and they... Now, you just steady that, young, young men, and pass that ribbon down that way. Pass it round your shoulder. That's a good lad. Same, put it round your shoulders. The, the, come for... Oh, young one there. There we go, that's the, that's the one. There, there it is. So, that's all uh, for tonight. Don't forget to tune in to Jim Will Fix It. Same time next week, we make more dreams come true. Great, so there's some biscuits there. Come on, do help yourself, yeah? Now then, now then, young man. I believe this came from you. Yeah. Well, what a splendid surprise. I I've got surprise for you. I never gave a Jim will fix it badge to the whole pack. But what if I give you your very own? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, please. Yeah. Well, you follow me. Excited. Well, if you want that badge, I want you to do just I want you to do just one more thing. Bonded off. Got lost in the woods. Luckily, Uncle Jim found him before the big bad wolf. Hi, how'd it go? Great. Well, come on, sit down. Tell me about it. Did he like the tie? Of course he liked the tie. Look at that. Oh, that's amazing. My father, it is six months since my last confession. And 
What sins do you want to confess? Selfishness. What was this selfish act? There's a calf in Ilkley called the Tradesman's, and the owner wouldn't let me pay. And I, uh, I didn't try to. Uh, even though double egg and chips is only a pound, and I knew he was skint. So uh, why do you think you did it? Uh, childhood. Parents struggled to put food on the table. So this fellow giving away free egg and chips, do you, do you think he got pleasure out of it? No question, Father. And you didn't like to take away that pleasure? I know myself how much pleasure I get from doing things for other people. And this is perhaps not a, a great sin or anything else. Not for myself, Father, but, um... I have a pal who struggles with the sins of the flesh. And he wanted some advice. Is this friend a Catholic? He is. But I think he just wanted to get things straight in his mind. What things, exactly? He's a single man, but he sometimes gets tempted. Oh, so a Saint Paul. I mean, temptation isn't of itself necessarily a sin. What if he gives in to it? How? Oh, um, forcing himself upon someone, a young person. A child, even. That would be a mortal sin. Posing, he did lots of good things to try and make up for it. Would there still be a chance he could go to heaven? Catechism is clear. Any sin can be forgiven. If he made a confession. But you must urge him if he has done anything like you have described to give himself up to the authorities. Make sure he understands that, Father. Bloody priceless, eh, Sam? <laughs> Dream maker to the nation. <laughs> King Jimmy. I'd settle for sir. Oh, they wouldn't be able to touch you then, would they? I mean, I know you've got other ways of killing stories, but who put a knight in the realm in court? It's not the only reason I want it. Oh, power and the glory too, eh? I never thought I'd get this far, so... Why not see if I can get all the way to the fucking top? Why not? Jimmy Savile. Mom, at your service. I heard the toys were in sound. I came to pay my humble respects. <laughs> may I? But indeed you may. Oh, goodness. I do believe I may have kissed the hand of a future Prime Minister. Well, we hope so. I didn't know you lived in Scarborough, Jimmy. I have many homes, none closer to my heart. See, 
snacks and, and ice cream par excellence, as served by my very good friend, the mayor. You must try one. <laughs> well, I shall. But can I just say how much I love general fixes? And Dennis and I are huge fans. Last week, madam, will get you everywhere. And I'm told you do an awful lot for charity. A call for help, I'm there. Well, I wish you well in your work. And I in yours. But may I make a cheeky request? Oh, I'd like a cheeky request. <laughs> I sometimes get requests from kiddies wanting me to fix it for them to meet the Prime Minister. Do you think that might be possible? Oh, of course. But you must first fix it for me to be a PM. Then I shall work my magic powers. Well, it was lovely to meet you. Ministerial rover bearing now Mrs. Thatcher. I would just like to remember some words of St. Francis of Assisi, which I think are really just particularly apt at the moment. Where there is discord, may we bring harmony. Where there is error, may we bring truth. Where there is doubt, may we bring faith. And where there is despair, may we bring hope. Splendid views. Lead on. the second and made a knight of the garter well deserved i'm sure they had the uh, proper air styles in them days yes you've never been fond of a short back and sides well this gets me as well welcome to checkers oh and thank you for fixing it for me to become prime minister as promised normally i do such a meeting at number 10 but i thought this would be convenient since stoke mandeville is only down the road well this whole area is like a second home and, of course, very handy for Broadmoor. Oh, you are involved there as well? Official entertainment officer. That's marvellous. So, the spinal injuries unit? Uh, yes, it's in ruins. Yes, I'm aware. They've asked me to head up a campaign to have it completely rebuilt. Jolly good for you. The architects have come up with an estimate of 10 million. Mm -hmm. I was hoping the government might chip in. You do realise the Labour government left this country's finances in a terrible state? I warned Mr Callaghan that the pot would be empty the way he was carrying on. He let himself be bullied by the unions, ran up a mountain of debt, strikes, rubbish on the streets? A terrible mess, no question. And I'm afraid some of the blame rests with Mr Heath when he capitulated to the miners. Well, now... If you show a miner weakness, he will have you for breakfast, and I should know I was one. Really? Hearts of lions, but give him an inch to the a yard. I rather think you and I are cut from the same cloth, Jimmy. Well, uh, humble origins, uh, and we know money doesn't grow on trees. So I hope you'll understand why my government can't help financially. And I do think it's vital people learn to help themselves. Which is why I'm determined to raise this money by hook or by crook. Then I'll strike a bargain with you, Jimmy. If you did somehow raise the funds for the building, I'll try and find the money to run it. In that case, ma'am, we have another deal. <laughs> How did you raise it? Well, all sorts of ways, but mainly a 24 hour sponsor. Morning, 
sweetheart. Tell you what, I'll see if I can get hold of one of these T-shirts for you. How about that? Bit nardy, that one. In and out of here all the time. Grandad got a bit over familiar with her. Uh, uh. Favourite ladies. Jill, Bondula's rolling in. Bingo. How are we doing, my hearties? Exhausted as ever, but it's wonderful. People just walk in, they give what they can, oh. and they all say, please thank Jimmy for it. Thank him from me and make sure they get a t shirt each. We pray for peace in the world that men, women, and children may live together in peace and harmony that God our Father intends. Lord, hear us. Lord, We pray for all in special need, the sick in mind or body and their carers, the lonely and those with financial, work, or family worries. Lord, hear us. Lord, We pray for those who have died and all who were bereaved, that the love of God may transform the darkness of death into the bright promise of immortality. Lord, hear us. Father asked me to do the collection plate. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth had given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. That shall be God forever. I want to ask you about the knighthood. Never courted, never sought. Well, I find that hard to believe. I, uh, I take it you're not a religious man, Dr. Wordsmith. No. Well, I think that's why we've probably got this ulterior motive problem. Jesus said, it's more blessed to give than to receive. That's all I did. Oh, come on, Jimmy. I've, I've been reading about this, I've been thinking about it. I mean, St. Matthew said, Give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Now, doesn't that imply that charity is never purely selfless, that the giver will always get something out of it? And you want that something to be sinister? Surely you can see why I'm pressing the point. That As I said to my good friend, Pope John Paul II, yeah. those who bring sunshine into the lives of others can't keep it from their own. And he said, spot on, Jimmy. The more happy I made other people, the happier I was. Sam, are you all right? What's all this? Your periods haven't started, have they? Uh, no. And why? Sam, why? To try and stop him getting in. Oh. Poor thing. Hmm. Look, whatever.
weather was happening to you at home, it can't happen here, can it? You're safe with us in hospital, aren't you? You couldn't be safer. Sam, what is it, hmm? Is there something else? Come on, cheer up. Give me those. Why don't you go to the day room and see what's on the telly? Can't. Got chapel. Priest expects me. Well, you go to chapel then. Stop worrying. Lord, we pray for those who are hungry and for all those charities who work to alleviate hunger and poverty both here at home and across the world. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for children and young people everywhere, especially those who are in care or otherwise vulnerable. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, help us to be understanding and forgiving of all those we encounter. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Merry Christmas, Jimmy. Same to you, Jeeves. Pop those under the tree, if you so kind. You'll find her in the kitchen. Merry Christmas, one and all. Jimmy, welcome. Merry Christmas. Now, I know you don't touch alcohol, so this is orange juice. Good health, ma'am. Please don't mad me, Jimmy. I'm not royalty. Well, you are to me, and I'm more than happy to provide some fun at the Court of Queen Maggie. Flattery will get you everywhere. Well, do you know what? I think that every Maggie needs a Jimmy. Quite right. This is Robert Armstrong, my cabinet secretary. He's the man in my life who makes everything possible. Or impossible. I think she's doing the wrong thing. <laughs> well, season's greetings, good sir. And you. Robert's only popped in for a sherry. Heading off to see my family shortly. Dennis has taken the other guests for a stroll. Uh, may I ask who they are? My speechwriter, Ronnie Miller, and three others, all bachelors like yourself, Jimmy. I hate to think of you poor chaps spending Christmas alone. Deeply touched. Anyway, it gives us a chance to catch up. It's been such a busy year. What with the Pope's visit... Oh, yes, well, uh, I acted as his native guide in Yorkshire. It was a great morale booster. As was the Falklands. It wasn't a decision I took lightly, but it had to be done. No question. And when people say to me, what about those 300 men who died when we sank the Belgrano? I say, Maggie had no choice. Thank you. But tell me about Stoke Mandeville. I'm hearing amazing things about the appeal. 
Amazing indeed. Another half a million, and we're there. Building work is already underway. Extraordinary. Well, I'm going to find that half a million for you. Oh, my word. And, as promised, the money to run it. Well, what a Christmas present. And, by the way, I'm sure your astonishing personal contribution will be recognised. Oh, no, I, I don't do it for the glory. But it's exactly that selfless public service that our honour system is for. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to find those men. Well, you've got an OBE, haven't you? I'm proud of it. OK, guys, I'm sitting down here like this. Nine, oh. eight, seven. Six, five, four, three. Five minutes to call is approaching. Thank you so much. I'm disturbing everything. With all our fingers crossed, we have the British public responding to that. Dr. Wordsmith. I ordered tea and crumpet, but I've eaten it all now. Sorry, it was a domestic issue. Trouble with that indoors? Rather not talk about it. Yeah, I'll bet. You'll not have uh, visited this august establishment before? No. You don't let any Tom up, Dick or Harry in here, you know. See that? From the Pope. Knight of St. Columbus. That's why I got in. Previous members include Darwin, Dickens, Disraeli, Duke of Wellington, who parked his arse in, in this very spot. I sometimes like to think of the Duchess up there looking down on me. Thinking, what an extraordinary journey my little boy made. Indeed. You were talking last time about not seeking the knighthood, which was perhaps just as well, because there was a time when the possibility was slipping by, wasn't there? Please elaborate. Well, you'd rebuilt Stoke Mandeville, found extraordinary national acclaim, but by the late 80s, there was still no letter from the Honours Committee, and your career was on the slide. News to me, Dr. Wordsmith. Please elaborate. I was hoping you'd do that. I can't. Because it wasn't. Tonight, I'm joined by a showbiz legend. The man who's been spinning records for over 25 years, Jimmy Savile. How would you react as a Roman Catholic to yeah. if one of your partners became... Yeah. Um, don't you believe you, you put God in somewhat of a dilemma? Yes. There's Jimmy Savile, the good man that gives hey. money to charity, that yeah. helps young children. Yeah. And there's Jimmy Savile, who flies in the face of everything that's written in the New Testament about sexual promiscuity. Schwats. Showed me the debit side and I said, hang about, and I'll show him the credit side and it does that mean anything? And if he says that means nothing. Oh, fuck 
workers. Charity work, you come across as a bit of an egotist? As if it's all about you and not the people you're helping. I don't care uh, how I come across, right? In one of your tabloid articles, you describe having sex in your passion wagon. How do you reconcile that with your Roman Catholic faith? Well, I thought, I thought this was going to be a bit of fun, but no. Sex is dirty. Swerp. 20 years ago, I would have knocked some about. What have you got for me? It's him. Robert Armstrong, Thatcher's cabinet secretary. It seems she's put you up for a knighthood three times. He's blocked it each time. He's a cunt. I knew he didn't like me, but he's, he's got a effing knighthood. I can't have one. No reason, but he's got Maggie's ear. Wants to save her embarrassment. About what? Seems to be to do with stuff you've said and written over the years. What stuff? About encounters with young women, of which you've claimed to have many. You once spoke of being feared in every girls' school in Britain. That was a fucking joke. Well, Armstrong didn't find it funny. I've just published this. Advice for young people on how to avoid perverts. I help children. I want that nicer. Well, Thatcher's the only way to that, sir. Have you got anything for me? Wouldn't mind a bacon roll as it happens. Have the rest of that. They put an extra rasher on, just for me. Come in. Jim, didn't know you were here. Only arrived last night. Well, thank goodness I've been trying to find you. And so is someone else. Greetings, ma'am. Jimmy, dear, how are you? Right in fit, ma'am. Good, because I'm calling to ask for help. Anything at all, I'm at your service. Miss Broadmoor, the place is in chaos. Management have lost control. I'm told the prison officers' union are practically running the place. And the patients think that every day is April Fool's Day. None of this is news to me. I've seen many things as entertainment officer uh, that concern me. Well, that makes me even more sure that we're doing the right thing. And what's that? The management and board have been suspended. The Department of Health is setting up a task force, and they feel sure that with that can-do attitude and Yorkshire common sense, you can help turn the place round. It will be an honour and a privilege. Thank you so much, Jimmy. I won't forget this. <clears throat> Robert. My advice remains the same, Prime Minister. Questions and rumours about the man persist. But you never explain what those questions and rumours are. Surely, if there is anything in them, the BBC, Stoke Mandeville, and others would have taken action. Mm -hmm. It's like us, they have more pressing things to deal with. I'm getting sick and tired of this, Robert. Earlier today, Health Secretary Edwina Curry arrived at 10 Downing Street to discuss the situation at Broadmoor with Cabinet colleagues. If anybody was so basically unhappy here that they didn't like it, then they should hand their notice in and leave. The gloves are coming off. What do you mean? I didn't get sent here by the Prime Minister just to fuck about. That's all you've ever done before, are you? What do you mean? Inviting press in to photograph you with Ripper and Ronnie Cray. That's to show the public the work we do here at Broadmoor. Mm. Not because you're addicted to publicity and love nothing more than blowing smoke up your own ass. You see, that's the sort of attitude that's got to change. And how are you going to do that, Jimmy? Dr Savile to you. You're not a proper doctor. I've completed an initial assessment and I've come to the conclusion, you lot, I've been fiddling your expenses, Letting relatives use accommodation designated for staff only, and generally taking the piss. Bollocks. This place has been underfunded and understaffed for years. And now they've put a lunatic in charge. Who, for reasons only known to himself, seems to spend most of his time hanging around women's block. You are an arsehole, pal. But what you'll find is, I'm an even bigger one. 
I was regularly in touch with Maggie with progress reports. She was delighted. And maybe she wasn't paying proper attention, though. Jim fixes it for 60 psychos to go free. News of the world. Not true, and I sued him. You once gave a press conference where you yes. said you wanted yes. male and female patients to mix. So, and I quote, they can fall in love. Isn't that a pretty eccentric approach to mental illness? Pure common sense, Dr. Wordsmith. You have some other interesting views. You once said of psychopaths, there's no point asking them what they did on that dark night because it wasn't them that did it. It was someone using their body. What on earth do you mean by that? I sense the toilet lid being lifted. Perhaps it's time I looked under yours, Dr. Wordsmith. What do you mean? You're having trouble with Mrs. Wordsmith, aren't you? If you must know, I have split up with my girlfriend. Yes. Now, can we please move on? I'm looking at a man in turmoil, whereas you are looking at a man who's always been at ease with himself. All I did was put a hand on some spot of you's arse. The little twat goes home, tells his dad I'd propositioned him. Dad takes the lad to the police. The next thing I know, the police are at the door. I, I don't know what else might come out. If the cops are coming after me, they're nowhere close. They might come after you. You won't say out about me, will you? No, I, I, I wouldn't say, I swear. But you're always saying you've got friends in the police. I wondered, could you put in a word? I can't, Peter. I can't. It'll only make things worse. You best be on your way, mate. Yeah. Yeah, Hi, Maury. Oh, my Lord, Jimmy. Hi, right, guys and girls, carry on. You know, don't mind me. Hey, yeah. Nice I saw you walking past the gaff earlier. What, what are you doing here? Best cod and chips in town you once told us. We're about to order it, you fancy. Yeah, no, I mean, what, what are you doing in Scarborough? We're house hunting. Here, why? Tell him, Charles. Well, we've, uh, we've news for you, Sarah. I'm retiring. What do you mean? He's retiring. After years of hard graft, he deserves a rest and... We've always fancied living in Scarborough. Fucking okay, hell. Hey, language. Can't have you here. Who's going to look after stuff for me in Leeds? You can still manage your life. Organise your fundraising in North. I don't want you in Scarborough. Why not? Because I, I come here to relax. Oh, I don't know what you get up to here. Or in any of the other places you spend your time, not to mention where you park that van up. Why are you so concerned to keep everything separate? Steady on, Meryl. No, it needs saying. Why all the secrecy? Anyway, like it or not, we're moving here. We've just put an offering on a lovely little place. You see now, Charles, why I never got married? <laughs> Let me guess. You're knocking on the door of middle age, you split up with Mrs. Wordsmith, and you're living out of cardboard boxes. This is really boring. I've told you I'm going through a tough time, and that's all you need to know. But you want to know everything about my life. I thought that's what we agreed. We agreed. Nothing, pal. We said we'll see how it goes. Well, it's over. You can sling your hook. What do you mean? To paraphrase what the Tories said to Maggie when her time was up, you can fuck off. Now. Run from me, Jimmy. Won't be able to hide forever.
minutes ago, Mrs Thatcher's government won an overwhelming vote of confidence in the Commons. But for the Prime Minister of the last 11 years, it was a Pyrrhic victory. Tonight, the key to 10 Downing Street lies in the hands of her party. She led them to victory three times, then they turned on her. Ladies and gentlemen, we're leaving Downing Street for the last time after 11 and a half wonderful years. And we're very happy to relieve the United Kingdom in a very, very much better state than when we came here 11 and a half years ago. But then the Iron Lady's composure almost broke. Watch her face as she reaches her car. 